This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. Hello, Duke fans, and welcome to episode 523 of the Duke Basketball Report podcast. It is Friday morning, June 30th, 2023. We are entering the second half of the calendar year at the end of today. It will be July for, I assume most listeners, the July 4th holiday is coming up. I I think most of our listeners are in the United States, so uh, so they acknowledge American Independence Day. Next week, hopefully that means that you get some time off uh, from from your professional pursuits and get to spend a bit more time with family, hopefully the part of the family that you like. We, hopefully, are part of the family that you like. We are the Duke Basketball Roundup. Did I say Duke Basketball Report when we started? Probably. You did. You uh, did, but that's cool. Eh, we, oh, well. We're, I, we're still learning. Some, Somehow I think the lawyers aren't coming after me on this one. We are the Duke Basketball Roundup. I am your host for this episode. I am Sam Klein. I am joined, as always, by Donald Wine and Jason Evans. Mr. Evans, good morning. How are you? Doing pretty well. Uh, I've, I've been up for, you know, I, I know you guys probably just got up fairly recently. I've been up for many, many hours because I, I work for CNN International when I'm not talking about Duke basketball or talking about movies or whatever else it may be. I work for CNNI, and I've been very, very busy working on international stories, mostly the riots that have been consuming France in recent days. So I'm a little bleary eyed because I've been up since about 4 a.m. OK, uh, Jason flexing on his on his early to bed, early to rise lifestyle. <laughs> wait, wait, Wine. I did not say early to bed. <laughs> Just because I get up early doesn't mean I go to sleep early. I'm Jason, operating on about four hours sleep. Right. Jason here. Evans flexing on his no sleep lifestyle. <laughs> sleep when you're dead. <laughs> Donald Wine, uh, I think got a poor night's sleep. Donald, what's up? I'm in Nashville, um, and I think a combination of hot chicken and uh, and barbecue led to a little bit of heartburn about 3 a.m., but other than that, I'm fine. I will say, Sam, this holiday weekend actually starts, we're recording on June 30th, it actually starts tomorrow. Happy Bobby Bonilla Day to everyone who celebrates that, and Canada <laughs> Day, I guess, but to those, Bobby to Bonilla those who Day. observe. Bobby we, Bonilla I, Day is amazing. I think we only have a couple more Bobby Bonilla Days left, don't we? Doesn't it uh, end some, no, it goes sometime to 2035. Oh, 35. Yeah. For some reason, yeah. I thought 25. He's got more than a decade left. Man, I, you know, if anyone out there uh, wants to sponsor me for a million dollars a year for the next 30 years, dbrpodcast at gmail.com. I would love to get in touch with you about about that contract we accept sponsorships i i would accept the bobby boat i would trade contracts with bobby bonia <laughs> you think <laughs> that seems that seems like the prudent thing to do you know what else seems like a prudent thing to do is to talk about the schedule for the acc sec challenge that was released this week the inaugural acc sec challenge and if it is a basketball challenge that features the ACC. Duke is always going to be in the headline, and this is no exception. So for the inaugural ACC-SEC challenge, the news this week is that Duke will be facing Arkansas, University of Arkansas, in Fayetteville. This will be Duke men's basketball's first trip to the state of Arkansas, and it should be a great time. Recent and not so recent history that Duke fans should remember about Uh, University of Arkansas men's basketball. Of course, Duke beat Arkansas in the 2022 Elite Eight 
en route to the Final Four, Duke's last win of the 2022 season, and a game that I am sure Arkansas fans are not quick to forget. Games that Duke fans are not quick to forget, the 1994 National Championship game, Grant Hill's last game in a Duke uniform, uh, sent Duke home uh, uh, just one win short of the title. So, both uh, Sam, Sam teams... I, I believe that game is referred to as the Tony Lang fingernail game. Ah, uh, yes. Lang had not gotten a manicure, he would have blocked Scotty Thurman's shot, and Duke would have gotten the championship. But the... Yeah. <laughs> the Sam was five years old and doesn't remember that game game. Uh, so, so go watch if you, if you don't remember that game, go watch the replay. Tony Lang's and, fingernails scrape the ball. <laughs> what, 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 what will I gain? What will I gain from this experience? Yeah. So, so Duke plays Arkansas in the, uh, in the ACC SEC challenge. And uh, there are a bunch of other games. Uh, Miami gets to play Kentucky, Tennessee, who uh, Tennessee's playing North Carolina. I think there were some Duke fans, out there saying wouldn't it be fun to play tennessee given that duke just lost to tennessee in the 2023 ncaa tournament that would have been an intriguing matchup playing kentucky is always an intriguing matchup even though duke fans get to see it every couple years in the champions classic so uh lots of fun games highlighting highlighting this one but let's quickly talk about duke getting to play at arkansas jason your thoughts so uh, obviously this is a, a a great matchup for the Blue Devils, a true road game against a team that everyone projects to be top fifteen or or you know or better than that in the country. This is a game that will absolutely be a quad one game on the Duke schedule, and, and one of the tougher games I think on our schedule because I I am telling you uh, they are not only are they going to sell out Bud Walton Arena, but it is going to be just absolutely rocking in a big 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 way. And to me, you know, aside from the fans and, and the atmosphere that I think is going to be really, really compelling, uh, Arkansas is just a really interesting team, I think, to take on this year. Uh, we feel like Duke, you know, this is an experienced Duke team because we've got, got, we have Jeremy Roach as a senior, and then we've got the, the three sophomores, three freshmen who came back for their sophomore year, and we're like, wow, look, we've got sophomores. <laughs> and we're all excited about that. This Arkansas team we're going to be playing – and and look, obviously, when we when we get into November, we'll we'll do an extensive preview on them. But just so folks have have an idea of what Duke's going to be facing, this Arkansas team is ridiculously old, like absurdly old. As much as we feel like Duke is old, Duke is a bunch of children, babies compared to this Arkansas team. It is like nothing. Like their top seven guys are are, are all like fifth year players or seniors. I think there's one junior in there, Trevon Brazil, who's their best player, is is in his junior year, but all the rest of them are fifth year seniors or seniors. A lot of them are transfers from other programs, including L Ellis, who is the best player on Louisville last year has, has uh, transferred over to Arkansas. It, it's going to be a very, very interesting contrast of old guys and young guys. And, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it's a great upgrade of the Duke schedule. I mean, I know people talked about wanting Kentucky. Arkansas is a better team than Kentucky next year in all likelihood. And and this is a, a, a going to be a really, really high profile matchup. I think for me, well, first of all, my dad is from Arkansas. And the first thing I thought of was to talk to him about it because uh, it, let's put it this way, guys. My dad grew up in Arkansas. He's almost 72 years old. He's only been a Fayetteville once in his life. Um, and so I was like, oh, this has got to be a game that we can go to. You know, Bud Walton Arena is one of the biggest uh, D1 arenas in college basketball it's like about nineteen thousand and change so this is going to be kind of like you know an elite eight type of atmosphere um when we go in there again like sam said the first time that duke has ever traveled to the state of arkansas this is going to be a big deal for them and it should be for us as well i think jason the reason why a lot of us uh, myself included kind of wanted kentucky because i wanted to go in a rep arena with this squad and just beat the crap out of them but we don't get that opportunity. We get we actually get a true test, and I'm looking forward to that challenge. And for me, this is an opportunity to brush up on my Arkansas geography because Donald, I was just thinking about the fact that uh, you spend a lot of time in Dallas, and uh, so now I was wondering how far is Dallas, Texas, from Fayetteville, Arkansas. So I will pose to Jason: How many hours do you think it takes to drive from Dallas to Fayetteville, Arkansas? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'll go with twelve. Well, no, it is only five out five hours and change to drive from from Dallas to Fayetteville. Thanks for playing. 
I, I feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like everything in Texas is so huge that even if something looks like it's close together on the map, it's a long way apart. The, the so, thing is, Dallas is like is like in in exactly the direction that you need to be to get to things in Arkansas. But I understand exactly where you're coming from. My Texas mm -hmm. geography is is not that strong either. So I suppose for Duke fans in Dallas, it is it is a bit of a haul to get to Fayetteville. But hopefully, hopefully, a few Duke fans make it to this one. I. I think Jason was saying that the the crowd at this one at, at this game at Bud Walton Arena is going to be out of their minds. Uh, I am sure that Arkansas fans uh, are are excited to be playing Duke, regardless of where it is, and especially excited to get them uh, in Arkansas, in Fayetteville, in Bud Walton Arena. So I think that one's going to be great. And then and then to Jason's point, uh, also a great matchup that Duke is getting here. Regardless of the outcome, I think it'll be important for this team to get tested in a in a tough road environment like this one early in the season. We have talked about how John Shire is trying to, it seems like John Shire is trying to upgrade the out-of-conference schedule quality a little bit. I think Duke missed the boat somewhat in the way that they scheduled the uh, the the early Holiday season. Holiday tournament. Yeah, a uh, tournament where they're, they're not really playing any other uh, power conference schools. So even though this this game, you know, replaces what what would have been in, in the old ACC Big Ten world, you know, a game at Ohio State or a game at Michigan State or a game at Wisconsin, uh, I think it's a, a pretty good substitute. And so uh, for that reason, uh, I'm excited that that, that Duke is is uh, embarking on this trip. And Sam, keep in mind, this is the third of those big games that we're going to have because this game's on November 29th. You have the champions classic. That's the, you know, around the first week of the season. And then we'll also have that home game against Arizona shortly thereafter. So, you know, those two games occur before Thanksgiving. This occurs right after Thanksgiving. So this will be, you know, again, adding to that test as we enter uh, the end of the non-conference schedule and enter ACC season. And, and you know, Sam, to your point uh, about John Shire and the schedule, and look, I want to be clear. I don't. I don't know how much input Duke has into how ESPN puts together the challenge, but traditionally, under Coach K, for the most part, when Duke would have a road game in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, you know, somehow it would manage to not be in a home arena. It would largely would usually end up being in like one of these. I don't want to call them a neutral arena, but you know, not not where the not where the the team plays all their home games like Duke would play like a lot of games in like the United center or something like that. They wouldn't necessarily play a ton of the, a ton of these games as true road games. And what I'm sensing from John Shire is he's willing to do true home games more than coach K was. Um, uh, Jason, you know, that was true. That was true. Like in the early part of the ACC big 10 challenge, but not recently. I mean, we went to yeah, the Cole center. We went to, you know, uh, Ohio state. We had some true oh, right. games yeah, in those, yeah, yeah. but that like, you're right. In the beginning of that, we would, I mean, even we had a game against Ohio state in Greensboro one year um, it, in the early years of that challenge. But lately it's been just road games. Cause I think, you know, they want to focus on the college campuses. Yeah, I, I, it's funny, Jason. You say this, and, and maybe that is true for the early part. I don't remember that in recent years. Like, I have, I have memories of Duke playing specifically at Ohio State, at Wisconsin, uh, at Michigan State, at Michigan State, and, and at Michigan State. Um, You're right. So when, right. when Trey Jones might have been just earlier, destroyed somebody's life. There yeah, no, I, I definitely remember it from earlier in the challenge. I, I remember there was there was a one year we were supposed to play Michigan State. And and it wasn't at it wasn't on campus. I, I vividly remember that. Yeah, it was, it was in it was at the palace. Yeah, uh, you know. But anyway, oh, bottom line, waste. <laughs> yeah. play, bottom them line the, my... play them in the road in the road arenas. And Bud Walton, I think, is a is a not only is it it's supposed to be a fun place to play, but it's a it's a big place to play. I think as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Donald mentioned that. But anyway, again, bottom line, I just get the I get the impression that John Shire seems a little more willing to take a true road game than, than maybe we were, we were under coach K. And I'm, I'm all for, I'm all for that. I'm all for Duke playing in, in the road arenas. I don't know if I'm going to make it to, to Duke at Arkansas, but uh, I just talked to a friend this week who lives in Tucson, Arizona to say, uh, I will be visiting you for the, the Duke at Arizona game in the fall of 2024. And he said, okay, great. So, uh, um, so at least I'm locked in for that one. I, I don't know that I have anyone to stay uh, to stay with in, in Fayetteville. So that might be a bit more challenging. Yes. Uh, let's, let's pivot to one other 
topic uh, related to men's basketball before we take a break. And that was the announcement this week. We were talking about uh, coaching staff and the uh, and the departure of Emil Jefferson and wondering exactly what that means for the rest of the coaching staff for this season. So we got one piece of news that does not tell us who is getting hired, but it does tell us uh, what everyone's titles are going to be this year. And that is that Jay Lucas was promoted from assistant head coach to associate head coach. Now, you may ask, who freaking cares? He's he's still on the bench. He's still a he's still an assistant coach here for John Shire. He still re- reports to John Shire. What's the difference? Uh, the difference, I think, is a is a sort of public statement from John Shire that Jay Lucas is you know in in, in the elevated position. This is a role that uh, previously was held by a number of guys. Is currently held by Chris Carowell and held by a number of other guys who had then gone on to become. Uh, full-time head coaches at at other schools subsequent to being the associate head coach. For a while, many years ago, Johnny Dawkins was the associate head coach, and Chris Collins and Steve Wojciechowski were both assistants. Uh, They were both eventually promoted to associate head coaches. They left. John Shire became an associate head coach. Jeff Capel was an associate head coach. So now Jay Lucas uh, has a title equal to that of Chris Carowell. And I I think the the most interesting thing about this is that Lucas – not only is is not a quote unquote Duke guy, but uh, has only been with the program for one season before getting this promotion. So, Jason, what is your impression of Jay Lucas getting promoted to associate head coach under John Shire? I, I agree with you. It's significant that this happened after only one year, although it's worth noting that Jay Lucas has been an, an assistant coach at the college level at, at some big time programs for for a number of years. So it, it, he's not a guy who's inexperienced not by any stretch of the imagination. I would imagine that associate head coach title is sort of Duke's way of saying, hey, these are the guys you should come in and, you know, if you're looking to to pick up a new head coach, these are the guys at the front of the class over here at Duke. Uh, it's also probably a way of getting, you know, someone a little more money. I, I was intrigued. The To me, the, the biggest thing that came out of the announcement was John Shire essentially said, Jay Lucas is our defensive coordinator. That, that the, the, the defensive, you know, stuff last year – was largely handled by him and for Shire to be, you know, essentially anointing him defensive coordinator in this announcement clearly means that he's going to put the defense on Jay Lucas's back this season as well. And, and I mean, that's a big deal. And, and Duke last year, Duke's Duke's defense was very, very impressive last year. We, we obviously do not have Derek lively anymore and that, that will make a big, big difference in, in the way Duke plays defense. But I'm very, I'm very intrigued that, that Jay Lucas gets this upgrade, that John Shire starts publicly referring to him as the defensive coordinator. And, and I think I, I think it's a really, you know, it's an interesting time for the program. Last thing I wanted to add on it really quick is that, you know, I mentioned when when Emil Jefferson was leaving, I, I mentioned on this podcast that the NCAA is allowing additional assistant coaches to be a part of the staff. And we're waiting to see who John Shire is going to hire. At the moment, right now, Duke has no assistant coaches. <laughs> We've got a head coach. We've got two associate head coaches. We've got a special assistant to the head coach. We've got a general manager. We have no assistant coaches at the moment, I I don't believe. So it's going to be really interesting. There are, again, I think as many as three positions that can be filled there. And uh, we're just dying to know who they will be. The uh, organization at the moment is, we might say, top heavy. So, uh, yeah, the, 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 the intrigue, we, we don't have any further ideas about who John Shire might be targeting. I know we speculated recently about what that might look like, but we no indications officially from the program about what kinds of uh, of assistant coaches they're looking for. Donald, any further reaction to Jay Lucas being promoted to associate head coach? Wait, Jason, three open spots, three of us. I, I mean, I think it makes sense. Just what saying. Is, just Donald, ask, if asked, I will serve. If yes. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, what what uh, what would you know if Jay Lucas is the defensive coordinator? What would you like oversight of uh, as an as an assistant Duke coach? Jerseys. I mean, have y'all met me? Of course, it'd be the jerseys. The jerseys. You're in charge of you'd be <laughs> the, charge you'd of jerseys. Be the assistant head coach in charge of jerseys. And, yeah. And and Jason, what would you be in charge of? Uh wow. Uh, I'd be in charge of entertainment for sure, like team bonding kind of exercises, movies, that kind of yeah. stuff. I'm all over that thing. I will yeah, say, guys, I, I will say that the, the the respect that Jay Lucas has commanded in the first year, I think, is obviously noticeable. And Jason, you mentioned, you know, in the video that 
John Shire did. He mentioned uh, him being a defensive coordinator. I think the other thing that caught my eye was that he talked about the outside perspective that he brought in, the fresh perspective that he brought in. And Sam, you led that discussion on how we need those uh, around the Duke program. So it, it seems like that is working. And also that it, it feels like John Shire at least is going to rely on that a lot more than we've seen in the last few years. Yeah, it, it's possible given the number of open spots that next year Duke has more non quote unquote Duke guys on the bench than they have Duke guys, because at the moment it's, it's just, two to one uh Shragi is is sort of a push given that he he worked at duke for so long before actually becoming a head coach somewhere else and he isn't technically an assistant coach so uh although although we had speculated earlier that maybe this means he gets promoted back to uh assistant coach but but no no real intel on that yet so we will wait guys let's take a quick break when we get back uh duke men's basketball also announced the jersey numbers that all the new guys are going to be wearing this year. The roster has been updated with heights and weights, so we're going to uh, blindly uh, try to understand sort of what what all the numbers mean, and we will also touch on football recruiting just a little bit, so stick around. Why take one vacation with the family when you could take all of them? With Royal Caribbean, you don't just go to the beach. You visit a private island and race down the tallest water slide in North America. You don't just go for a road trip. You ATV and zip line through the jungle. You don't just go somewhere new. You rappel down waterfalls and discover ancient temples. Because this isn't just any vacation. This is all the vacations. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. We are back and we are talking jerseys and heights and weights. We are looking at numbers associated with the Duke program, some of which are completely arbitrary and some of which could be meaningful. So the the announcement that, that came through via uh, a cool social media post was that the four freshmen have been assigned jersey numbers. They are jersey numbers that have uh, moved around a lot in recent years. So Jared McCain is going to be wearing number zero. Caleb Foster is taking over number one. TJ Power is number 12. And Sean Stewart is 13. As well as we've got uh, heights and weights for for the entire team. They're all updated. Uh, I don't want to run through all the numbers, but Donald, I'll start with you. First of all, let's get to the jersey numbers first, because we know that that's the, that's the good stuff. Uh, any of these jerseys you think are are particularly cool on any of these players? I mean, I consider 12 a power number, so it makes sense that TJ Power would get number 12. I think the one surprise that I see through these is, like you said, we've seen these jersey numbers very, very recently. I mean, 0 and 1 were used last year. 12 was used last year. You know, we see these numbers over and over again. The NCAA, I'm pretty sure, just passed a, a, another rule they that did. said that they can yeah. – add six through nine. And I'm surprised that no one took them up on that. Um, and, and maybe that's the Duke thing saying like, Hey, we're not going to do that yet. But um, I, I found it odd that uh, no one, none of the guys went, tried to, you know, go that route and pick a number that has six through nine in it. I mean, look, we have, we have, you know, images assigned in our heads to a lot of these different numbers. And if I was a player coming in who wanted to carve my own legacy, so to speak, I'd be all, I'd be like, yeah, let me make, get me num number six or number 18, whatever it may be, pick the number, but I can be the first one, the first dookie to wear that number. I mean, everyone's talking about TJ power wearing number 12 and they're like, Kyle Singler, Kyle Singler. like TJ power is already being compared to Kyle Singler now as a result of this. And, uh, you know, maybe TJ power loves that. But maybe on the other hand, he wants to be the first. Uh, I, I'm, I'm with you, Donald. I'm really surprised that no one picked a six through nine number. Jason, is is uh, whether it's it's Kyle Singler with number twelve, but do any of these numbers zero, one, twelve, or thirteen have particular significance to you, or someone that you immediately associate with them? Uh, I don't think so. I'm having to think pretty Zion, hard. Zion Williamson yeah. wearing number one, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, or yeah, Kyrie they're, they're... wearing number one. Except Kyrie wearing number one. Maybe Austin Rivers wearing number zero. Sure. Sub zero. <laughs> there, there. I mean, look. There, there are a lot of them that, but they, these guys. I, I don't know. If if I was if I was doing this, I'd want to be the first of my own, as opposed to following someone else's footsteps. Jason, what's your what's your number? Uh, so throughout my whole life, my number's been twenty one. 
uh, mostly because that's what Dominique Wilkins wore for the Atlanta Hawks. It's unfortunately not available if you if you uh, walked on to Duke men's basketball. Donald, right. what's your number? My favorite number is number two for obvious reasons. Uh, but for baseball, I always wore number seven. Um, and it was always because two was never available. So they gave me seven once. And that year I got number seven. I hit seven home runs, had 40, had 49 stolen bases, was never caught, and hit 727. So how many games, how many games did it take you to steal 49 wait a second. bases? Wait, wait, wait. You hit 727? What yeah. baseball league was this? Little this league. T-ball. Little league. You In never Texas. got thrown out stealing? Never. I'm, well, I was, man, they got, hey, I was, they I, was, got, I, was, I was, I was him. Catchers, yeah. catchers in Little League had some glass arms. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I, I, I said I'm not going to read the the heights and weights, but do either of you have reactions to any of the announced heights and weights that are now updated on the Duke roster page? I think the one that, uh, or, or, or the two that that somewhat jump out at me are that Christian Reeves is listed at 261 and Kyle Filipowski is listed at 248. Uh, no, Kyle Those Filipowski is coming back from injury, but. Uh, that means that, that the man is packing on some pounds. So uh, any reaction to that or any of the others, Jason? Uh, no, no. Those are the two that jump out. And and, and I'll say Spencer Hubbard's listed at 5'8". Spencer Hubbard is not 5'8". <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm... Could be. <laughs> he could be. I don't uh, think so. It's think impossible he... to judge. It's impossible to judge who's 5'8 next to a bunch of guys who are like 6'3 and above. You know, the, the, there's no, right, that's there's, probably no true. Like, right. there's no visual comparison. It, no, the, the, the other heights that jump out to me a little bit are TJ Power and Sean Stewart, both being listed at six nine. Uh, yeah, both those guys are guys who just you know by the nature of where Duke, you know, we don't we don't really know where Duke's big men are going to be this year. Um, you know, we're we're unsure what we're going to get necessarily from Christian Reeves. It is possible there are going to be some Duke lineups where where we will need TJ Power. Um, or, or Sean Stewart to to be guarding some bigger fellows in the around the ACC, and if that's the case, it's good that those guys are both six nine. I will say, as someone who is five nine, it's very clear to tell who's five nine standing amongst a bunch of people who are six nine. It's very very easy. But I I will say this: I think the the thing that stands out to me is also you know one guy that I looked at was Mark Mitchell. Mark Mitchell's listed at six nine two thirty two, but but it, we we've seen him before. That that man is strong, but the fact that we have a bunch of big guys that are two thirty or above, it's not just about strength; it's about durability. And hopefully, this helps these guys stay in on the court uh, when they're in the game and not, you know, because the ACC season's rough. We we've seen it, so to for them to be able to, you know, kind of fight fire with fire, so to speak, with you know being a little bit heavier, it means hopefully that they're going to be more durable at the end of the season. One more topic. Uh, and then we can get out of here. We're not going to tell you that we are the experts in uh, in college football recruiting world. There, th- this is a this is a much deeper uh, and and compli- more complicated place than uh, men's basketball recruiting. Where, frankly, we are going to be really focused on like the very top players and and just the the guys who are going to Duke. But we are you know looking our looking askance at at. Duke football recruiting and noting that uh, Mike Elko and his staff have been on a tear recently. And I know Jason wanted to highlight a major commitment that Duke got this week from Chase Tyler. Jason, tell us about this young man. Yeah. So Chase Tyler is a, a kid from Georgia. He's uh, he lives fairly close to, um, to, to where I am. And uh, he's a six, three, you know, athlete. He's probably um, mostly a wide receiver, but the reason I thought this was an interesting um, recruitment, not only the fact that this is a kid who was recruited by a number of top, top, top tier schools, USC was after this guy. Uh, you know, th- this is someone who who had offers from from a bunch of big time, big time programs, and he chose Duke. But he, he's a guy who plays uh, when he's not playing football, plays high school basketball, and he's on a pretty darn good high school basketball team um, in in the five A class, which is one of the larger classifications. Here in the state of Georgia, he's a shooting guard. I, I'm not saying that it's a sure thing, but I will not be surprised if we find out. Uh, look, Chase Tyler is mostly a football player. There's no question about that. But I sort of wonder if maybe when he's done with football season, if he might m- wander his way over to Cameron and be a walk-on on the basketball team. I'm not saying he's going to be someone who would have an impact 
on the team. The, you know, the Reggie Love is the is the best example of a football guy who came and played a little bit of basketball and, and ended up having an impact for Duke. We've seen Julius Peppers and other players do it at, at other schools. Julius Peppers very famously did it for North Carolina. But I really think there's a, a decent chance if Chase Tyler wants to, and if it works with his football, um, you know, his football duties, that he would uh, wander over and 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 become a walk on on the Duke basketball team because I think he has that kind of talent. The other thing I wanted to note was what a phenomenal, unbelievable job that Mike Elko and his staff have done in recruiting over the past month, month and a half. Twenty four seven, the Devil's Den had an article up about this. They they noted that Duke had 28 players take visits during the month of June, 28 football players, 20 of them ended up committing to Duke. That is, that's a ridiculous number. And we should remember, not that anyone has forgotten, Duke football recruiting, not the same as Duke basketball recruiting. The programs are not on the same level out there. When Duke basketball goes after a guy, you expect them to get them. When Duke football goes after a guy who has offers from Tennessee or Oklahoma, or USC, or Notre Dame, you go, oh, Duke doesn't stand a chance. I got news for you, folks. Look at the guys that Duke has just signed in the, in this latest class, which, by the way, is widely considered one of the top 20, top 30 classes in the country. There are a lot of big-time football programs that also wanted these players, and these guys still chose Duke. It, it's it's uh, Elko has done a truly remarkable job in every aspect of the football program, winning games and bringing in recruits. Jason, you mentioned some of the dual recruits that we've seen on the basketball court. Reggie Love is not just one of them. Another one, Jay Heaps, uh, played basketball and soccer uh, yes. at Duke. So we've hey, had some of these. Era. Yeah, yeah, yeah 96 to 99 uh, is when he played. So, And he's still you know, on the side. I mean, he had a long soccer career um, and just happened to play basketball as well at Duke. But I think, guys, there's three letters, three ac- an acronym here that we have here. E-B-C, Elko B. Cruton. This guy is doing leaps and bounds better uh, than we've seen in a long time on the recruiting trail. And and he's making no bones about it. It's not like he's out there quietly signing guys. He's like, hey, y'all need to be coming to Duke to play football, too. Like, this is a great this is a great thing uh, to have this issue where we might consider a guy who is a dual threat, both on the basketball court and the football field. So uh, I'm really excited to see uh, this upcoming class. But really, I'm you know more focused right now on the coming season because, you know, Duke has a really big season ahead of them. And I think, you know, with a tough schedule, I like the confidence that's coming out of this camp and the confidence coming out of this group of guys saying, Hey, we don't care who's who we're lining up against. We can take them. Love it. So guys, uh, I think that is it for this episode. Uh, We are out. We will see you on the other side of the July 4th holiday. Stay in touch with us. DBR podcast at gmail.com that hasn't changed he's jason evans and he's donald wine that hasn't changed i'm sam klein this has been episode 523 of the duke basketball roundup duke band take us home bobby benay let's talk oh i didn't tell I, i didn't tell you guys I saw Mission Impossible 7 or whatever it is, 8, 8. 7.1. 7.1, whatever it is, the other day. That's 7.1 more Mission Impossible movies than I've seen. <laughs> I really haven't seen any of them? No. I've seen, mo- I've seen all but the last, like, what was the last one? Was that Ghost Protocol? Uh, I forget the, the subtitles. The names, yeah, but I think I've seen all but the... But the, uh, the last one was Tom- really good. That's the Tom last- Cruise? Maybe I did see it. Maybe I did see it. With Henry Cavill? Henry Cavill was the bad guy. Um, no, then I didn't see it. I think, Ghost, I think Ghost Protocol is the last one I saw. It. I saw that in IMAX, and that was awesome. Uh, let me tell you something. The, the one with Henry Cavill, there's a there's a, a scene where Tom Cruise and Henry Cavill are fighting this, this martial arts dude in a uh, bathroom at a nightclub. It's like one of the best just fight scenes that you'll see, you know, ever. It's, it's really good. Mm-hmm. This latest one had, I mean, like it has incredible stunts and I was like really enjoying it while the lights were down and literally the moment the lights came up and the movie was over and I had a chance to sort of think about the plot. I was like, that was ridiculous. <laughs> that was just, it's like, there's going to be that, two of them. Yeah, It was this film that like, I, I'm, 
I was totally enjoying it while I was immersed in it. But the moment I started to think about it at all, I was just like, that's terrible. Like, it makes no sense. It's, <laughs> it's kind of a pity, but don't, you know. Don't, don't tell Tom that. Tom doesn't like, doesn't take criticism well. <laughs>